Hello, my name is Elizabeth Harvey. I'm speaking from Berlin and I'm delighted to preview the latest volume of documents in the series on the persecution and murder of the European Jews by Nazi Germany, 1933 to 1945. The latest volume is volume five. It covers Western and Northern Europe from 1940 to June 1942. And it will be published next spring, April 2021, by de Gruyter in hard copy and in ebook format. Publishing the documents in English follows on from the publication of the 16 volume series in German, which will be completed next spring with the publication of the volume on Hungary. What I'd like to do in this short presentation is to give a short overview of the series as a whole and then focus on some documents from volume five, which illustrate the introduction of the star in occupied France. So just to mention a few of the features of the series, perhaps for people who haven't come across it yet, uh, the 16 volumes offer comprehensive uh, geographical coverage of Nazi-occupied Europe. They present documents from a multiplicity of perspectives, from the perspective of perpetrators, victims, and from third parties, institutions and individuals who are not directly involved in the persecution. The volumes present documents chronologically rather than thematically. I'll come back to that uh, shortly. And in the English language uh, volumes, there are updated introductions, expanded glossaries, and a deep, for each volume, a detailed subject index. To give you now a sense of the series as a whole, you can see that three volumes have already been published, one to three, and volumes five and 12 will be published in 2021. Volumes 5 and 12, uh, forming a pair on Western and Northern Europe, uh, present in total around 750 documents, all translated from the original source languages and covering develops, de developments for the entire period of occupation in Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and France. What I think is particularly intriguing and potentially exciting about the series is the way that the documents um, can trigger, I think, curiosity on the part of the reader. They're not extensively commented. They're not presented thematically. They are presented in this rather open way, chronologically. And the reader has a lot of contextualization uh, presented in the introduction, but has the opportunity, I think, to discover the documents, so to speak, for themselves. And I think the chronological presentation uh, it, it assists this, this sense of openness. It juxtaposes different perspectives uh, in quick chronological succession, succession. And I think it allows teachers and students to develop their own interpretation of uh, the documents as they encounter them. So to illustrate this approach, the way the documents are presented chronologically and how one gets this quick switch of perspectives um, over this chronological sequence, here we have four documents that deal with the star um, the introduction of the star and the reactions to it. Uh, four documents that deal with these events from different perspectives. So firstly we have the regulation issued by the military commander at the end of May 1942 which introduces the star, compels Jews from the age of six upwards to, to wear a star in public. Details what the star must look like. We then have two diary entries. Uh, the first is by a non-Jewish schoolboy, Alain Sonnet, who writes in his diary on the 7th of June, 1942, wondering about how his friend, his Jewish friend, Jura Riskin, might 
react to the measure. I wonder whether Riskin will agree to take part in this sinister masquerade. And he also writes about how he and his friends uh, discussed the star and what to do about it. He writes, some friends were of the opinion that no one should wear them and others said that we should all wear them, who is right. This diary extract is then followed by another diary extract, this time from a Jewish student, uh, Hélène Baer, who on the 8th of June 1942 went out for the first time in public wearing the star and in her diary entry for 8th of June and then for the 9th of June, she describes people's reactions to her. And she describes her own reactions to other people's reactions. In this case, she's talking about the reactions of her student friends at the Sorbonne. And she writes about the emotions that seeing their reactions triggered in her. She writes, I suddenly felt I was no longer myself, that everything had changed, that I had become a foreigner, as if I was in the grip of a nightmare. So following these two diary extracts, we then switch back to the perspective of the perpetrators with an article from a collaborationist newspaper. This was Le Cri du Peuple, edited by the French fascist Jacques Doriot. And this newspaper published on the 11th of June, 1942, a spiteful article ridiculing a Jewish woman lawyer who had worn with pride the star on her lawyer's robes. So this article ridicules her and accuses her of hateful pride, of arrogance uh, in her gesture. So if we take these documents together, I think one can see the, the effect of the switch of perspectives and perhaps taking them together, one gets a sense of the different worlds coexisting in Paris at that moment. The world of the German military commander and its occupation machinery, whose successive regulations on the Jews created ever tighter restrictions and set the trap that would shortly be followed by deportations to Auschwitz. Then we have the world of the French collaborators who cheered on the Nazis as they implemented anti-Semitic persecution. And we have the perspective of non-Jewish Parisians who were attending school, going to work, mingling in the streets, in the shops, and in the, in the courtyards. And then how we have the, the shocking collapse of this normality for Jews who were subjected to this sudden public stigmatization. I think if one was teaching this subject, the introduction of the star in occupied France and using these documents, I think there are several directions that one could encourage students to go and to explore further this topic. One could ask perhaps about the wider picture of French reactions at the time. Um, the introduction gives some pointers to that. For instance, it mentions that 35 non-Jewish French people were arrested for wearing the star in solidarity with the Jews. Or one could browse other sections of the volumes, uh, of this volume on different countries and look at how the introduction of visible marking worked in other parts of Western Europe or in other volumes in, in, in Eastern Europe as well, the star or the armband. And one, of course, could also uh, look at how Jews in different parts of Europe, in different situations and times, uh, reacted and recorded their reactions to, to this measure. So I think there's a lot of potential for widening one's knowledge of this topic using these documents as a starting point. Anyway, I hope this short preview has given some sense of the potential of these documents as a resource for teaching and studying the Holocaust. And of course, we would welcome any feedback that you might have that could help us in our further work. Thank you very much. <laughs>